The end of fight camp is upon us, and we're at the last session of training before the big fight on Saturday, April 8th. The sense of urgency is at a paramount, and Martin is ready. His time is now. Last week, obviously, if you guys saw episode two, you saw that I faced a little injury. I hyperextended my knee inwards. The second nickname crew has for me is the Wolverine. The reason why is because I heal pretty quick. This week, it was great to see. His mobility was great. He was able to really execute the techniques that we wanted. I'm really good about recovery. I iced and he did. I made sure I didn't let it get lazy. I was still stretching it out. I was elevating my leg. It didn't restrict me too much. I was still able to kick. Obviously, I wasn't able to knee, but I bounced back right away. Four days later, I was able to start knee and start kicking properly. I wasn't res restricted on jump roping or running. So while I was injured, I made sure I cycled, I swim, always finding alternatives to make sure that you still continue your training without having to get any of those setbacks really worked on my breathing techniques. Breathing techniques is very important. Um, it helps push your lungs to those extreme levels, especially when you're starting to feel gassed. Other than that, I feel great. You know, that bounce back is coming back hard, 100%, ready to go back. So today, during the, our fight camp session, we were actually missing a lot of guys. I had to basically modify what we were gonna be doing today due to lack of individuals being here. It makes me laugh because, you know, a lot of people talk about how you know, oh, Kunil, I want to fight. I want to be a part of this fight camp. I want to help the fighters train. And talk is the cheapest, most affordable thing in this world. People always want everything, right? They want six pack abs. They want to be successful. They want to make a lot of money. They want to be a fighter. They want to be a champ, but they want to get all those things at their convenience. When they don't have errands to run, when they're not injured when they've had eight hours or more of sleep but that's not how life works and today was just kind of an example and a reminder just to everyone right like how people talk a good game but when push comes to shove who really turns up is who really wants it fight camp today was very much just drilling 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 today was all about just spiking their stamina level to another level we drilled uh two minutes of defense just countering back and forth three hit combos and then not only that, we did a lot of back work. Every technique that they throw is with as much force and as much power and as much speed as they physically can throw in each rep. And then resetting their guard, they're simulating how they're gonna load up to throw something in a fight. Power jabs, power crosses, power hooks to the body, hooks to the head, power low kicks, power body kicks, power knees and elbows. These are some things that I did as myself when I was training for uh, fights. I would do these type of drills that would just completely annihilate my whole body. And what happened was when I would do conventional pad work rounds, it just spiked my stamina to another level. And that's why I've kept maintaining those type of training methods. It's not commonly known or done by a lot of fighters, but I do it because my fight style was very unique and different. And obviously so are my training methods. So I just pass that down to my fighters. Well, how did I feel afterwards? Definitely gassed, but you should be. If you're not feeling gassed, you're not putting in proper work. If you're breathing comfortably, you're not pushing hard enough. You should be able to push your body to the point where you can't breathe. And not only that, where you're about to puke. I feel very, very confident in myself. For this fight, I feel the most confident. I feel very alive, very aware, very focused. Not only that, just the connection that me and crew have in this camp is intense, feels good. One thing I was kind of emphasizing on Martin today, the way people approach pads, right? When their pad holder tells them 10 kicks, a lot of fighters approach those kicks as like, okay, here we go. They think about the repetitions as opposed to the habits and the technical stuff that you need to accomplish when you're throwing each kick. So my emphasis today was reminding Martin that look, hey, stop thinking about the repetitions. Focus, keep your guard up, touch your temples, load up and throw each kick like you are, you're fighting right now and you're about to blast them with a powerful kick. How is your mechanics? How is your load up to throw it? 
So they're not just getting into the habit of just throwing a bunch of like repetition kicks. Cause when you do that, it's not the same thing. You're approaching these repetition kicks in a different way as opposed to fighting. I like somebody in my face. And that's what I like when crew is like really drilling me in my face, you know, sergeant style, general style, just fix it, fix it, do something. That's how I work. I don't need that cookie cutter bullshit, you know, participation trophy attitude crap. Treat me like a soldier, treat me like a warrior, and I will fight like one. You treat me like a little bitch, I will be a little bitch. So today's session, you know, what I was noticing a lot from my fighters, I noticed their footwork was a little off. And so when they had done all the drills that I had planned for them, I decided I'm gonna add something a little extra. And it was just a simple footwork drill going from cone to cone. And I want them just to reiterate how to efficiently move forward explosively, move back real quick and explosively, and then attack forward. Once they got to the forward cone, then they had to move quickly, moving backwards with good footwork. So it was just me reiterating what I always teach my fighters is good footwork, good defense will save your life in a fight. Yeah, so fight day, I keep myself isolated. I do a lot of visual exercising, so I think in my head a lot how I'm gonna execute my fight, what I'm gonna do to win, what are my goals, my strategies, and definitely really work on just keeping my body, my mind, and my breathing all connected in one so I can keep a nice flow. Another thing as well, just to avoid any type of negative interaction, feed myself a lot of positivity, definitely watch a lot of inspirational movies, uh, a lot of motivational speaking that I gotta listen to. Um, I also put myself in a lot of meditative states. It helps a lot with keeping my mind clear. I also focus on a lot on uh, recovery, getting massages, making sure I'm keeping my body at 100%. Fight camp's over, we're leading into the fight now and uh, moving forward, Martin's ready, his stamina's there, it's more or less now maintaining that mindset. So his Muay Thai nickname is the Boogeyman. And so today was about reiterating, getting him into that alter ego because the Boogeyman scares people. The Boogeyman is relentless. The Boogeyman doesn't hide and run away from people. It's the opposite. The Boogeyman comes, you run and you hide because you're terrified. So I was reiterating him to get into that alter ego leading up to this fight. He's got to stay in character. He's got to live and breathe that character all week long. So that way it transitions to his fight. One thing that crew touched base on today was the fake applaud and the doubt that people have in you. 80% of the time, people doubt you, regardless. They'll smile, hug you, I'm proud of you, I can't wait to see you win. But behind the back, they'll be like, oh, did you see his last fight? He was getting his ass whooped towards the end, that's why he lost the fight and da da da. Cool, whatever. I don't really care. Uh, my motivation doesn't come from that. My motivation comes in from the fighter spirit that I got. And not only that, making sure I follow direction and listening to my head coach and making sure I, I do what I need to be doing. Those people that end up leaving gyms because, oh, I'm not winning because I'm with certain with that, with that gym and I, I'd be better at this gym. Well, guess what? You can switch up as many gyms as you want, but if you don't fix the issues that you have and you don't admit and become accountable to them, it doesn't matter where you go or who you coach by, you will still lose. You will still fall. And I've seen those people as, oh, I'm gonna go to this gym where they have champions, amateur champions and professional champions. And then they go over there and they still lose. What happened? Why'd you lose? I thought you were going over there to be a champion and become this success. And you know, here at MTK, it didn't help you. Well, did you drop the ball? You lost? What benefited you? Nothing. You still didn't fix what needed to be fixed and how you needed to come into. Fighting is a mind state, a state of mind. If you can't, if you can't do that, it doesn't matter where you go. You still have that loser mind state, guess what? You're gonna be a loser. You need to have confidence, walk with your head up high, and be ready to fight like a warrior in there and give it all you got. If you can't, don't matter where you go. If you don't got it right up here, don't mean shit. You're still a bitch. Lazy habits, lazy habits get us. Okay, lazy habits uh, show the opponent that we are weak. Lazy habits show the judges that we are weak. When we show the judges that we are weak, we lose. And remember that. Remember our major main uh, thought process is what, guys? We're going in there to beat them up for three, three rounds. rounds. Okay, we're beating them up for three rounds. In order to do this, we need pressure. Okay, and pressure starts with good footwork. Okay, pressure starts with good footwork. Keep your guard high and tight. Use your hands to set up everything that we throw. Uh, remember, by the second hit, you need to be throwing something back. 
Well, three hits at most, but by a second hit, you guys should be firing something back, okay? We've worked on, we've done numerous drills where that you, you're firing back, and right? And you guys learn how to throw that inside leg kick when someone's trying to like jam you up yeah. and they try to push you. You learn how to do that, use that. It will come in handy if they charge. It will come in handy, okay? But remember, don't forget about the most basic concept of footwork. It saves your life. Really All right, so we're beating them up for three rounds, okay? Constantly pressure. We learn what happens when we don't put pressure. We allow them to put the pressure on us. We allow them to score points. That doesn't happen. Not this time. It happened once, never again, right? Never again. Never again. All right? All right, guys, we're good for today, okay? That was good. That was good. We're going to start tapering down the training more. You guys are... You guys are ready for these three round, this three round uh, beat up session. You guys are ready for it. Now it's just up to you guys. How bad do you want it when you're up there? Yeah. Okay, it goes by fast. David, look, look real quick. Oh shoot, that went by so fast. We don't have time. Remember, urgency is the key word here for us. Yeah. Okay, we learned from our mistakes. Now we move forward. Tomorrow's a new day. April 8th, you show everyone at the Commerce Casino, okay, who you guys are. Okay? Everything you guys have worked for, April 8th, you're gonna showcase it. All right? Everyone who, and trust me guys, as much love and support, everyone, there's still, there's some people in here, okay, that are still doubting you guys. Yeah, yeah. Guarantee it. Uh, there, people love to talk highly about you guys in front of your face, behind your back, talking smack. Okay, remember that, okay? As much people show that fake love all the time. Oh, I can't wait to see you fight. Come on, David, I can't wait to see you fight. In the back of the mind. Let's see. People are weird like that, guys. People are weird like that. And I'm speaking from experience, okay? You think people have your back, people, that you think people like love you to death? Oh, they're talking back behind you. They're talking behind your back, okay? So this April 8th, it's time to show everyone, like I'm serious. You know what I mean? I'm there to beat them up for three rounds. We learn from our last mistakes, that's it. We don't need to learn twice. Mm -hmm. Once is all we need. Yeah. Show everyone who is doubting you right now, who is talking behind your backs, okay? Uh, people who have left to other gyms because they think other tra training elsewhere is better, show them, yeah. okay? Show them that fights are won from you guys, not from the training, not from, because I've had fights where I didn't even train as good when I, in retrospect, but my mind was right. And when my mind was right, it carried my body and my everything else with me. You know what I mean? So it's all about how your mindset is that day, okay? Believe in yourselves how I believe in you guys. Shh. Hush the critics. Yeah. Hush the critics that like to talk bad about MTK. <laughs> Hush the critics that like to talk about you behind your back. Because trust me, they're there. Yeah. They're there, okay? And we're gonna silence everyone, okay? With your hands in the air. Yeah. All right? Love you guys. Love you too. We're getting that win. We're winning. We're winning. Boogeyman Predator, let's get it. Let's get it.